I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today with us we have Doctor Rial Gomez. And we had a very interesting episode where we discussed the mouth and all the aspects and habits that we could do with, you know, taking care of our mouth, making sure that it works well. But today we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about the aesthetics of our mouth because this is something that many of us are so conscious about. This is what we actually use our mouth for most of the time, every time, especially in this selfie generation. So today we're going to talk about the smile. So, Doctor, welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. Hi, Ashton. Thank you so much for having me once again. It's a pleasure to be here. My pleasure. So, when I say the word smile, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? So, when you say when a person smiles, mm. it's not always necessary that they smile with their teeth. Right. Okay. They smile with confidence. They smile with their eyes. Okay. They smile. Sometimes the entire face lights up. Mm. Okay. But that's why is that happening? It's only because they're that confident in their smile. Right. They know that when they're smiling, they look good hmm. okay they're confident about that fact correct and even if they have a crappy smile their, their confidence shows through right okay but now that personality trait is completely different hmm. okay these guys for someone who is absolutely confident no matter you know you could walk in in shorts and a ganji also and still be like you know i i'm i'm the biggest in the room correct absolutely but not all of us are like that right. okay we're always very conscious about how our teeth are hmm. you know or we don't know what to do about hmm. it and this actually has a major effect on our psyche, mm. you know, on our persona. It makes a difference. You can dress really well, mm. okay. You can smell really nice, okay. But the minute you smile and it's a no-show, mm. you know, people will either look away or you know, you don't connect. Correct. Right. And this is especially true for people, you know, for high-powered, high-powered individuals, business meetings, uh, people who come in front of the camera. You mentioned selfie generation. It's something so basic, mm. and it's something that's actually taken for granted without realizing how important it is. Absolutely, it's that importance yeah. that's so critical. Absolutely. So, doctor, you know, in your field, when we say smile, right, you're a specialist in this. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, so basically, I I have when you say I'm specialized, I basically is something I would call myself as a smile designer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've done something known as digital smile design. Mm -hmm. It's called DSD. Mm -hmm. It's a concept that was brought forth uh, by Dr. Christian Coachman. He's the one who actually brought this concept about. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, you actually are able to see your smile. Okay. Or a patient, for example, like you come in and saying like you know. I don't like the way I smile. Mm. And the doctor says, okay, we'll give you a new smile. Mm. And all the treatment's done and suddenly you look at yourself and you go like, doc, I don't like my smile. You know, right. It's worse than what I walked in with. Mm. Okay, so how, how will you ever know what your smile is going to look like? Or how will even the dentist know? Mm. Okay, because when we work, we work with labs mm. and they're only seeing a model of your teeth. Mm. They're not looking at your face. They have not ever had a conversation with you, the patient. They've only talking, spoken with the doctor. Mm. So when we... Uh, as a as a as a smile designer, we design your smile. We don't just look at your teeth. Mm. We look at the entire complex, the entire face. Okay, because everything should blend in naturally. Right. The best smile is such that it even if it's made, it should look natural. Correct. Seamless. Right. It shouldn't look like why are your teeth so white. So sometimes you know these Hollywood makeovers and all these things that the teeth are so you know toilet bowl white is what we call them correct that you can see it and go like you know this is absolutely fake so mm. that's not what we do mm. when we give you your smile it is as aesthetically pleasing mm. as can be in the keeping within the confines of your physical appearance matching with your face and even it matches with your personality so there are actual uh, so teeth shape differ according to a person's personality did you know that so oh, wow. if you have a more dominant personality mm -hmm. your teeth are actually shaped differently how does that work because you grind your teeth more or something like that is it no it, it, it's that? just it's just the way it is hmm. like 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 if you see a person who is uh, usually more forthcoming more you know so they have they stand in a different kind of posture Correct. you know they're usually taller they, you, so those few different traits are there right hmm. So even body your, language, body language, we have now all, teeth language. Yeah, so yeah, teeth language, if you could say, <laughs> right? So uh, your your canines will be more dominant. Your cent, your your central incisors will be more in a more what we say triangular shape. Then mm. you have a rectangular shape, an right. oval shape. Mm. You know, so all these things also match your personality. Interesting. So were these like hormonal changes, like when like higher testosterone people will have teeth like this and 
Is that... So it's basically a, a, a genetic sort of variation and a pattern that that see th- this is something that they just came about as how would you say in order to classify and help the doctors it, it, it give them like a guideline that when you're talking to this person and, and he is determined and he's giving out this sort of trait mm. as, as his personality are they more timid are they more you know do they have this more uh, dominant sort of personality mm. okay are they shy mm. so according to that their teeth they've done a study and they've realized that these people tend to have mm. these kind of teeth you can possibly show them something more towards this direction that would actually help them get a better understanding of what their smile could look like you would be a blast at a party you know when you speak to people and you'd be guessing what their teeth would look like it's like for the personality uh, no, I, I, it's a mental game fun <laughs> one cuz otherwise i think i'd bother a lot of people but it, it's good when you just were like yeah you're quite dominant and they were like oh my god how did you know that <laughs> yeah can i yeah, you have like a semi vampire look <laughs> yeah so so yeah so so that's what we use so actually our first our first meeting with you is not just putting you in the chair the mm. first conversation we don't even look at your teeth wow we are only deter- determining what are your expectations what do you want what's your personality mm. and that is and how can we translate that into your smile so that's what we do so our first half an hour is actually just this discussion i'm not i'm not even looked at your mouth right now that's so cool but you know so that's you what know, we do doc like there are so many people who didn't even know this was something that existed or was even possible like i'm sure there are people listening to this podcast saying that i could have done something about my smile Right. What is the starting point? What is the journey? Is this expensive? Is not expensive? What are the things that people should think of when thinking about something like this? So the first thing is, what should they do? Hmm. Okay. So the, the first thing is, you should, uh, whenever you're trying to get a smile done, hmm. or whenever you're trying to change your smile, understand this: that you have to be invested in it. Not just I'm talking about the money. I'm talking about your time, okay, and your level of understanding. You have to be motivated enough to go like, yes, this is what I want. It's like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. You can't just go one day all gung ho about it, pay the fees, and then next day go like, yeah, this is not for me. Okay, okay, because some some cases are relatively easy and it's a quick turn, so mm-hmm. you can get your you know your smile done in let's say a span of two weeks. Mm-hmm. But most of the times, it's not just. the teeth hmm. okay it's so many other factors that we have to look at and we have to bring them all into the correct position okay the placement has to be good the angulation all that has to be proper hmm. in order for us to get uh, the right result okay so we look at it like the foundation of a building if hmm. your building foundation is not good the house is going to either fall apart or is going to look like crap hmm. okay so first we make sure that your foundation is good so sometimes it could just be aligning your teeth hmm. so if the teeth are all wonky and they're out of place so see nowadays people get swayed by quick turnovers right everyone wants you know i walk in the door i walk out the door i want it and it's done with instant generation instant yeah but, but it's not like that it's hmm. not how we work especially hmm. sometimes we like to tell you that you need to get everything done correctly mm-hmm. and this takes time mm. but if you spend more time now it will last you also possibly your entire life okay okay if it's all taken care of it's done correctly so why don't you invest accordingly mm. you know so give yourself give us that time to do things okay so all this is assessed in the beginning only okay so then once once it's all done the best part about it as we as smile designers we do a test drive okay okay so after we've gathered all this data we've taken pictures we've taken videos we've taken models we've done all of that we digitally create your smile hmm. okay hmm. and this is done using all all you know the various know how and the tech and the features and all of that and then this digitally uh created smile is 3d printed okay so now basically we've reached that part where we were trying to eliminate the human element right okay and now it's gone into something known as copy paste dentistry wow. it's literally called copy paste dentistry hmm. so you can actually walk into the clinic hmm. and say that i like the way this person looks when they smile hmm. i like their smile hmm. i want that same smile wow so we can actually li- copy exactly that smile from a uh, you send me a jpeg or you send me just a picture of that person mm. and put it on to you superimpose it use the tech to blend it together and mm. we've copy pasted mm. a smile mm. you know so then that gets 3d printed when we do something known as a test drive okay. okay so how to avoid those sticky situations where you know you've delivered everything and the patient suddenly goes like or you say I hate what you've given me. Mm, the color is not right. I don't like the way it looks. It doesn't match me. Blah blah blah. In order to avoid that, we do this test drive, mm. where this 3D printed smile is actually placed on you real time. Mm. So you get to see your smile live. Mm. Okay, without doing any treatment. 
Right. So that's where you either decide that I like the way this looks, mm. or you say, can we, you know, tweak things? You can change the way certain things are. Mm. So it becomes a very incorporative process. You know, it takes two, mm. you know, to tango. So to, in order to get that dance going, your inputs are more valuable than what I would be able to give you. Correct. Right. So once all that's decided, only then we go ahead with the treatment. Okay. And now in the treatment. It's either veneers, mm. okay? So veneer is basically a, a very thin shell of porcelain or glass, mm -hmm. okay? That is chemically bonded mm. to your tooth, mm. okay? And these are I've, have been proven to be the longest lasting restorations in the mouth. Wow. Okay. Mm. My front two teeth are veneers, so I know I know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so uh, these basically uh, will stick on you, right? And um, they can help change the way your teeth are shaped mm -hmm. and the color. Okay. Okay. If your teeth positioning is, is wrong mm. or is incorrect rather, and we need to get that foundation like I was talking about better, mm. then first you need to get your teeth aligned. Mm. Okay, so for the alignment, you either have your conventional braces, mm -hmm. okay, which you've seen all the kids wear or your, your kids possibly have worn them in school. You have worn them in school, mm. okay. Or what we have now uh, for adults basically mm -hmm. is something known as aligners. So you've seen all these invisible aligners, mm. Invisalign, Correct. you know, Tootsie and all these guys come out. So mm. these basically are um, invisible trays, mm. okay, that are custom made for you. Mm planned by your orthodontist and uh, the team mm. of that basic that company um, these are also 3d printed mm. okay and what they do is using their um, ai their artificial intelligence their software they are able to predict your final outcome and how your teeth will move okay using orthodontic or using your braces principles mm. But sort of, you know, uh, on putting it on steroids in some, you know, way, and they're able to completely generate your treatment plan. Interesting. So, so these are actually faster than the braces. Uh, in certain cases, yes, mm. but marginally. Okay, it's not like if that takes a year, this is going to get done in two months. Huh. No, huh. Huh. Uh, from one year, it might get done in ten months. Let's say. Fair. Okay, mm. but that's how it works. Mm. But the thing is that how these are better than braces mm. is, especially for an adult, it gives you freedom. Mm. Okay, when I say this, uh, a braces that are obviously on your uh, on your teeth all the time, so socially smiling, so on and so forth, mm. people might get a little conscious. Mm. These are no, more or less invisible. Mm. Okay, you can't make out. Uh, even dentists can't sometimes if they're you know a little far away. Even I can't make out sometimes. Mm. So they're they're pretty damn good that way. Mm. Uh, second thing is your diet. Mm. Okay, you have to take them off when you eat. Mm. So it, there's no restrictions. Right, you can eat anything. Right. You can eat anything you want, hmm. you know. So socially, you know, if you're out at a restaurant or something, it's not like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't eat this hmm. or can't eat that because I have braces on. Hmm. Hmm. You just pop the aligners out, you eat what you want, wash them out, put them back in. So no restriction there. Your oral hygiene improves because, again, you take them off, brush your teeth, put them back on. Hmm. Okay, so all these things make a big difference. And the biggest thing being, especially with our time, uh, time schedules, hmm. if you can't come to the dentist every month, which you would have to if you have braces. You'd have to come once a month to get them tweaked. Right. With these, um, since they're already pre-planned, hmm. and we exactly know that in two weeks' time or three weeks' time, your, your tooth is going to move this way, I can literally give you three or four months' worth of aligners. Hmm. And you can just change them out every two weeks and continue with your treatment without even seeing me. Interesting. So, so you know, that really helps. Okay. So, so then it helps align the teeth. Hmm. Okay. Then once they're aligned, you either go, again go in for veneers, or you do crowns. Okay. Okay. So how a crown and a veneer different is is different is that the veneer, like I said, is very thin. Mm. Okay, and it just comes on the front sur uh, surface of your tooth, mm. whereas a crown covers your tooth in total. Okay. You know, okay. like it completely covers. So we have to cut your tooth a lot more. Mm. Mm. The veneer is basically the thickness of a fingernail. Right. It's it's right. literally that thin. So mm. we can make them about 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. Wow. That's, That's how much thin. we can work with. Mm. Yeah. So it's super thin, whereas the crown is obviously a lot more mm -hmm. okay because the crown is a load bearing structure yeah basically right. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so so these are basically the the two primary ways we can alter your smile mm -hmm. uh uh then of course this teeth whitening mm -hmm. okay which you can just do if you want to just whiten you're happy with the way everything is mm -hmm. but you just don't like the color mm -hmm. so that instagram filter was then or now with that challenge where everyone was holding yellow that yellow, yellow thing to see how yellow my teeth are yeah so this is something for those kind of people they're happy with the the smile mm -hmm. But they're not happy with the color. Mm. Yeah. So this is where uh, whitening would also uh, play a very crucial role. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do two kinds of whitening. There's a laser whitening, mm. which is done by a laser. Mm. So this gets done in eight minutes. Right. Okay. In eight minutes, we jump eight shades. Mm. 
Okay, and then you have the conventional whitening, which takes anywhere from half an hour to forty-five minutes. Mm. Okay, so these are the two different ways uh, we do whitening. So we do both kind of whitening, mm. and they tend to last for about a year to about two years, mm. especially with our kind of diets. Mm. Okay, because haldi, major staino, mm. coffee. The coffee, yeah, both you and I are coffee drinkers, mm. so we know how painful that is. Um, beverages, especially like your Coke and you know so and so forth, they have a lot of strong mm. uh, coloring agents in them. Mm. So obviously, all these things will impact the effect of the whitening. And uh, then you have something as basic as fillings. Mm. So earlier we used to do silver fillings. Mm-hmm. Uh, now silver fillings are a thing of the past. Everyone's doing composite or tooth colored restorations. Correct. And these are a great uh, way to uh, like a quick fix, mm. if you would say. Mm. Okay, for um, designing a smile. Mm. Okay, so the only disadvantage of these fillings is that they tend to, since they are a plastic kind of material, mm. they do tend to change color over the years. Like after three to five years, they'll start yellowing out a bit. Mm. So either you polish them again, mm. or you'll have to change out the fillings. Filling this doesn't happen with your veneers and crowns because those will not. They're glass, they're porcelain, they will never change color. Interesting. These ones will. But uh, in terms of the economics, mm. you know, the obviously the porcelain ones will be a little more expensive and these will be more pocket friendly. So if you want to take the jump, but you don't want to invest in it and you just want to, you know, get a feel for how things go, you can always try uh, the composite mm. filling way, mm. see how that works for you. And they can always be converted to uh, porcelain. Mm. Or if you just are ready for it, you want to take the job, go in and get porcelain veneer or a crown done. We're going to take a quick break. See you on the other side. Namaste, this is Cyrus Brocha. I am part of the government cancel culture program to remove rubbish off all the different streams available. So what we have is all the collected rubbish we put together on our show. It's called Cyrus Says. It's on IVM podcast. You have to watch it and listen to it. It's on our app. It's on our website. It's on the YouTube channel. It's on Facebook. There are many different ways. Don't bother me and ask me how. Uh, you have to find out. We talk to different personalities. Many of them are known. Some are just people we meet downstairs and invite them up for chai. But the point is, it's fun and it's very therapeutic. So please join in and listen to Cyrus Says. Welcome back. All right, let's jump into the conversation. You know, this is so interesting because the smile is such an important aspect of our personality. And like I was telling you that I got my front two teeth are veneers. And why did I get them uh, done? Because when I was in college, I had this huge gap between my teeth. I still have a gap, but I have a, had a much bigger gap. And I remember all my smiles were toothless smiles. Right? You're just so conscious about it, you know. And um, and like I keep saying that, you know, especially we live in this whole world of body positivity and things like that, where, where you're saying that you should be happy with what you have and, and, and those kinds of things. And I completely agree with it to the point where you understand that change what you can be happy with what you can't. Very true. Correct. So like if I could get this done and this improved my confidence to the point where I have no issues right now and camera smiling or doing all the YouTube videos, exactly. etc. I think it's a benefit. Right? Absolutely. These are the ways to start thinking about these changes that are taking place in our body or changes that you can make. Because I know there's a big taboo as well amongst people when, when it comes to plastic surgery, for example. Exactly. Like changing your body. Why would you want to do something like that? Um, have you had experiences like that when people have come with this kind of a dilemma? And, and how does it normally play out? So that's where the test drive is most important. Because see, you always feel like I, I will get treated and then I will know how it looks, right? Mm. Here I'm already showing you your result without you doing anything. It's like you putting on a shirt, you don't like the way it looks, mm. you take it, you toss it away and you go back to being what you were, mm. right? So this is a really big motivational factor for patients when they get a test drive done, mm. okay? And this is exactly the thought process that they have that I want to, but I'm not sure if I either want to invest or I'm not sure how it will look. Mm. I'm not sure how my family will take it. Correct. Are they going to be happy with it or not? I might be very happy, but if suddenly the wife comes and says, you look like a buffoon, mm. he's going to be like, doc, change it. I don't like the way I look. You know? Yeah. So, so in order to, you know, solve all these issues, these test drives are very important mm. and they really help. So in fact, um, I think a, a year ago, before the pandemic, my front uh, veneers broke. I, I bit down into something and it cracked, Right. And I went to get them redone. And the debate was whether I should completely fill up the gap that I have now right. or not. And then I was like, yeah, but like on all the previous pictures, I have one gap. Now I won't have a gap. Chala, ajeeb ah, right? ah, Keep the gap. No, kuch hai. Kya hua ah. <laughs> yeah. hmm. ah. So, you know, so, so I think these are important conversations to have. How much do you want to change? Do you want to change it in transitions? And ultimately, 
what are you doing this for right if you're doing this because it's a cool thing to do if you're doing this because you really want to feel more confident about it and you realize that you're going to i think it's something that is definitely worth it so these are a great confidence booster you know they they really make a big difference especially when just how you you mentioned like having that gap in your teeth uh, when you were young in your influential years you know as a teen a college year you know that's the time when you have to show off as much as you can to you know <laughs> for your college life absolutely and there if you're not able to smile or if you're conscious about something that you feel you cannot change mm. okay it 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 just kind of takes away you know it it breaks down that confidence that you would have mm. and it's something that can be changed very easily mm. so why not you know let's change tracks a little bit okay let's make smiling a habit okay now as a as a smile professional mm-hmm. many people don't know what to do when they are standing in front of the camera right like like now smile and they're like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. like what do yeah. i do how do i smile are there aspects that make up a smile that people can focus on to start becoming better at smiling because i know i when i was in college i had to practice smiling i stood in front of a on in front of a mirror and at that time my girlfriend at point to send you have to practice smiling what is this rubbish smile you have right. so we actually practice smiling and we came up with a fake smile at the top of our head we could drop this fake smile so are there aspects of a smile that are important that you can pinpoint and maybe people can start practicing so just like you said you have a fake smile and you have a genuine smile mm. that genuine smile even you feel happy when you're doing mm. it like right? and people can see that yeah this guy is like he's smiling through and through mm. you know so i i think if people were to discover that thing that would actually make them happy you know and sort of let that shine through the smile will just come automatically and it's it's basically a window to the soul mm. a, a, a general smile okay and especially if you know it's looking good the sky is the limit and why won't you show it off right you know? so i think people just need to understand uh, and not take themselves too seriously mm. that's that's the biggest thing mm. you know and they just be able to do it i think that taking self too seriously is a very very important point very yeah. important point okay. and, and and especially when something's wrong with their smile mm. then they're like even if i want to i can't because some someone's going to point it out or it makes me look weird correct you know and i'm not liking it even though the other person might feel like bro you're absolutely fine like you know you're absolutely okay why aren't you smiling mm. you're like no no i'm conscious yeah so it is actually taking away from you people around you don't care but you are holding yourself back and if it is just a very small thing like a filling for example mm. or just changing the shade of your teeth it's an 8 minute or a 30 minute procedure that would literally impact your life in such a large manner why not correct why not at least explore it as a possibility uh, uh, explore explore yeah, yeah absolutely why not, you know you know and and nowadays uh, since uh, we are moving towards a digital trend mm. it's we can show you before and afters without with just a photo mm. you know you don't have to undergo the treatment correct. you can just you you can look at the photo and be like do i like this mm. and if you like it then you go ahead are no, there places so, where people can start doing this research on understanding the different kinds of smiles and the different ways that it can change Yeah absolutely. Hmm. Where, where can people go and start searching for this what could you suggest would be a route for somebody saying that I want to work on my smile what would be the first step? No so the uh, so if they want to do some self research just check out smile just check out smile designing. Hmm. Okay? Smile or, designing. Or, or like a smile makeover but hmm. then don't don't get pulled towards get your smile changed in one day hmm. get your smile changed in 3 days none, none of those things hmm. just genuinely look at proper websites of clinics or um, you know where they are actually giving you information on the different procedures required timelines required mm. in order for you to change your smile mm. it will give you an understanding of what is deficient or what you are finding deficient in the first place correct is it just the gaps in your teeth like how you mentioned or is it the color of your teeth mm. or is it how just this one tooth is irritating you because maybe the gum is looking a little odd mm. So when you say getting a smile makeover it's not always that you need to get veneers it's not always that you need to get you know uh, crowns placed or anything Correct. it could be just something like a clean up hmm. and a whitening will uh, help your smile uh, shine through lovely you know so you need to understand what is wrong mm. or if you're not able to un- you're like something's off but i can't put my finger on it mm. go on, go to a professional go to a dentist mm. go to someone who actually does this on a regular basis mm. very important mm. you don't be their first patient for a smile makeover <laughs> okay make make sure that they've done this before or they are trained in it mm. and let them show you that okay you know this is what you're probably lacking this is what we can do for you this is what you need and you you could take it from there really What about all the home solutions that exist like should people even think about them not think about them what is the quality uh, of these things see so in 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 terms of 
the only thing you could do at home for in order to keep your smile as good as it is just maintain oral hygiene mm. okay because obviously the way your teeth are shaped and their position you can't change that at home mm. that that has to be done at a dental clinic mm. or done by supervision of a dentist mm. okay but in terms of just keeping it good keeping them white for example or right. keeping them clean mm. how do you keep them white should you use whitening those uh, toothpaste uh, no so again it's it's all a fad mm. okay your whitening toothpaste and all don't really help mm. you do have home whitening kits okay okay uh, we do have them here but the thing is that if your teeth are not clean ah uh, then there's no use doing it then then you you it, it's it, you is you're just putting a bandaid over another bandaid correct you know it, it's not it's not taking care of the wound mm-hmm. you need to you need to get that cleaned out first and then the whitening agent will actually act on your teeth otherwise the whitening agent is only acting on the food your breakfast that has been sitting there <laughs> you're whitening your biofilm that's it yeah, exactly <laughs> your bacteria like that <laughs> your, your, your bacteria is getting a nice little tan on you know so that's not really going to help at all so this is what people won't understand but because they think that i bought the whitening kit right it didn't help me so how is your whitening in a dental chair going to help uh. So this is it's not always it's not so simple. Correct. If it was so simple all of us would be walking around with nice bright white smiles, Correct. you know. And yeah. We have all those so, really white smiles also which are ghastly. <laughs> <laughs> so that also shouldn't happen. So what I would say is if you are confused mm. the best thing would be is just get a consultation, mm. you know, and just see what it would do. Also a home whitening and a an in office uh, that's what it's called mm. an in office whitening. Mm. Uh, the durations are different. Mm. The home whitening might not last you that long. and you have to do it more frequently which is also detrimental you don't want to be doing because see at the end of the day a whitening agent is actually an acid right it's hydrogen peroxide that we are putting on your teeth mm. okay the concentrations vary right. if you're coming in for an in office whitening it's going to be a higher concentration mm. for a lower duration of time mm. if you're doing it at home it's going to be a lower concentration for a higher duration of time mm. so basically you have to put those trays on with that gel and go to sleep with it correct right or something like that mm. now I I haven't done it personally, mm. but people who have mm. say it's not a very pleasant experience to sleep with a tray with some gel in it overnight, you know, and you're like swallowing it. And it, it I don't know, Correct. but it's not a very. It to me, it doesn't sound very pleasant. Absolutely. And the results are okay-ish. Mm. Okay, because the ones that we have over here and the possibly the ones you're getting abroad or in the states and so on, they're not the same. Mm. The companies aren't the same. Mm. Okay. And like I said, if your teeth aren't clean, they're not going to work on you anyways. Correct, makes sense. So get a consult. Get a consult. Something as simple as that, and then you can take it forward. Lovely, doctor. How can people get in touch with you? Continue this conversation. What are the ways in which that uh, people can reach out to you? Okay, lovely. Thank you for asking. So uh, we have an Insta. So the the clinic I'm at is called Therapio. Hmm. Uh, it basically means uh, wellness in Greek. We kind of uh, messed up on the name because it's a very confusing one. So people are like, you know, why didn't you go with a uh, gentle dental or something with dental in it? <laughs> you know, tooth fairy or something like that. And you're like, yeah, I'm sorry, we kind of uh, messed up on that one. But it's called Therapio. Can you spell it? Uh, then T H E R A P E U O. Okay. Now you know why it's. <laughs> This is very confusing, <laughs> but yeah, that's it is what it is. So, therapy or dental and multi specialty clinic. Uh, we have an Instagram page. Uh, we're pretty active on that. We have a uh, Facebook is called? profile. Uh, it's called therapy or dental. Okay, perfect. That's the Instagram page. Facebook also is therapy or dental. You can check us out in Google. Um, and we have a website also. It's therapyoclinic dot com. And I've also recently opened. A, we've launched a new website called Mumbai Smile Design. Lovely, much yeah, easier. So it's. It's uh, sorry, Smile Design Mumbai. Smile Design Mumbai. Got Smile it. Design Mumbai. So it's just recently launched. So all the questions that you asked uh, right now regarding smile designing, what can you do about your smile, all those questions, and you were asking of how people can get data, mm. good information on what to do. Please go check out the website. It's it's all there, and we're doing a uh, Smile Design for free. Wow. Okay. Perfect. Done. Yeah. So you can just go send us a couple of photos. We've sh- we've given you a guideline as to how you're supposed to send it mm-hmm. in, and we'll do your smile design for you for free and send you back a photo and if you like it we can uh, have a chat i'm damn curious about this okay done i'm going to try this out super thank you so much for coming on the happy coach podcast thank you so much for having me ashley absolutely it was was a blast thank you thank you so start these habits and share with us your progress using the hashtag the habit coach if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashden Doc on Twitter and Instagram. 
You can find lots more information on my website awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called A W E S O M E 180. That's awesome180. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Varun Dukhirala talks to Divyanshu Damani, co-founder and CEO at Tag Mango. The two discuss how content creators can monetize their content going beyond the traditional ads and brand deals. On The Habit Coach, Ashton is in conversation with Ashna Modi, clinical psychologist at ASA Wellness. They discuss the habit of deservability and gratitude. On Probation Step Promotion, Thak, host of Enough Talks about business networking and teaches us how to enhance those networking skills. On the longest constitution, Priya gives us a peek into the history of caste-based discrimination and how our constitution is committed to overcoming that. And on the Musafir stories, the hosts are joined by author and poet Mihir Vatsa. They discover the plateau town of Hazari Bag. Do follow us on social media where IVM podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And also do check out our YouTube channels. We have a number of them. You can get them on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. It really does help us spread the word. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for the network this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, CoinSwitch, Kuber, Intel, and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Come learn and experience the ABCDs of being queer with me, Shunetro. And me, Farhad. On our show, Gay BCD. The two of us take you through our stories and experiences of being gay men in the city of Mumbai and have candid and sometimes downright scandalous conversations about sexuality, gay culture and everything in between. Catch new episodes of GBCD every Tuesday on the IBM podcast website, app or wherever you get all your podcasts from.